Okay, so let's talk about getting at PowerPMAC memory from C. I mentioned briefly the PSHM pointer before. This is a pointer to shared memory, hence the SHM, shim. Excuse me, shared memory is all memory that's on the PMAC CPU proper. It's in um, local to that device. If you want to get at memory that's on other hardware, like the accessory 6080 card or your access interface card, accessory 2043, you need to use PIOM. This is pointer to IO memory space. It's a different block of um, PMEX brain. And if you want to get to user buffer, you use PUSHM, which we usually pronounce PUSHM, just for fun. And that goes to your uh, user buffer, sys.idata, sys.udata, that sort of thing. And these are all in gplib.h. And this is an example of getting at motor1.act pause. So it's just PSHM, structure dereference operator, and then you write the structure name. You can also get to P variables directly. Um, there's some ways to get to Q variables and so forth. And again, if you want to get at a structure that starts with sys dot, like sys dot max rt plc, you omit the sys. So here it's just pshim points to max rt plc. And also be um, aware that since you're operating in a C environment, you need to properly typecast the data, either writing to or reading from structures in PMAC. P variables and Q variables are both of type double when observed from C. So you need to write a floating point value to them. Um, there was something else I wanted to say, but my brain is rebelling. Oh, yeah. So another thing to note, C is always reading variables as whole words. Um, in the script environment, some of these structures are actually functions that have been masked very cleverly by our firmware programmers. And when you call them, um, it actually goes and does a bunch of stuff. It's not necessarily just going to a certain value. So some structure elements available in script are not available in C because of that reason. And you have to piece together the functionality um, yourself. There's no definitive list on that, but if you find like, oh, hey, you know, I'm trying to access this and it tells me that it doesn't exist, that's the reason why. And you can just call me and I'll help you figure out how to do what you're trying to do. And another thing is you're always reading a whole word. Some of these structures in, power, in, the, in the script environment will mask and shift certain parts of the word for you. But then when you go to read it in C, you're actually getting all 32 bits of the word, and you need to mask and shift to get the particular bits out of that word that you need. So if you don't know what masking and shifting uh, is, masking is when, for example, I take, um, I take my motor1.act pause or whatever, like this example. And let's say I only want to look at bits 0 through 15 of this guy. You can mask with a hex value. Where the high bits in this hex value represent the bits you want to get out of the word. So you're basically saying, show me only these guys. And um, let's say you wanted to look at just the top 16 bits of this word. You would do downshift 16. So this takes 
the whole word, which is a 32-bit word, and then grabs the top 16. and scoots it down 16 bits so that when you read this result, you're just getting this part now. Actually, I think act pause might be a 64-bit word, but you get the idea. Um, similarly, if you want to write to a word, you only want to write to the top 16 bits or whatever, then you can shift what you want to write to it up 16 before writing to that word and so forth. So you just need to be aware of the fact that you're always reading whole words and mass can shift appropriately. Shifting up is, is this operator. So that's right shift or down shift, and this is left shift or up shift. If you're shifting toward the most uh, significant bit. And this is just a uh, bitwise and. That's what we use for masking. <sighs> okay, so there's a couple different ways to reference named variables. If you remember from Alex's presentation, we have all kinds of variables in Power PMAC. The most commonly used are globals. We also have CS globals and stuff. And when you name one of them, like my global, it actually gets translated into a numerical index. And in C, we have two ways of getting at the variable that's been named. One is PP script mode, and one is enum mode. PP script mode will let you use the name directly, so you can just write my global in C. Enum mode requires that you use the pshim points to p bracket and then the name. So the name is actually uh, a pound-defined numerical index in ppproj.h, and that's why when you write pshim points to p bracket my global, that's why it works, because it actually just replaces that with 8192 or whatever your index was. So to pick which one you want to use, right before ppproj gets defined, you do a pound define and then either underscore pp script mode underscore or underscore enum mode underscore. My recommendation is to use enum mode, which is that method, because it forces you to be aware of which variables you've defined in script and which variables you've defined in C. And that's helpful because a lot of variables you've defined in C will just be local and you want them to go away, and this is one way of helping yourself remember which is which, but it's customer preference. So this is um, what using enum mode looks like. I just showed you p shim points to p bracket my global, and if you want to get at an array of globals, you just index through the array like you normally index through an array in C, by adding an offset from the base. So my global array is the name of the array, but it's also the base element index, the index of the base element, and then you just add a number to index through it. So p bracket my global array plus one is the same thing as my global array parentheses one in script. It's getting at the uh, index element three, or sorry, index element one. My brain is rebelling today. Uh, you can also use some functions set global var and get global var, and set global array var and get global array var to modify these variables instead of using the syntax that I showed you. These are actually just um, macro functions, so they're really fast and it will just find and replace the syntax that I showed you over there. Similarly, we have functions for setting and getting uh, 
CS globals, which are Q variables, and setting and getting arrays of CS globals. You can also use syntax similar to that over there, down here, where your Q variables are in cordx.q bracket, and then the name of the variable. So an example is pshim points to chord1.q bracket my CS global. So that would be the instance of my CS global in coordinate system one, because we picked one right there. If you're using PP script mode, then the way you get at the global variable in C is just by the name, like I said. If you have an array of globals, you write my global array, and then in parentheses, you pass the index of the array. For CS globals, you write the name of your CS global, and then in parentheses, you pass the coordinate system number. And if you have an array of CS globals, you pass the coordinate system number, and then a comma, and the index of the array after that. Okay, so if you want to get at memory in a card in your rack, or in your brick or whatever, then you can use pointers to the uh, gate structures. So depends on what kind of gate you're trying to access. For gate one style, you want to use a structure pointer, volatile gate array one star. That's the data type. For gate two style, it's volatile gate array two star. And then we have gator, volatile gate array three star for gate three style. And then gate IO styles are volatile gate IO struct star. So in your racks, you only have gate three style and gate IO style. Your accessory 24E3 has a gate three chip in it. So it's a gate three style. And then your accessory 68E has a gate IO chip in it. So that's why we use the gate IO uh, pointer. And then once you've defined these pointers, you can get the address of the card's memory with these functions. For example, get gate three mem PTR, and then you pass it the index of your card. So this index is the same index that you used up till now for your gate three structural elements. So for example, you wrote, you know, gate three bracket zero for all those elements. That zero is the same number you pass in to the parentheses here. So I do get gate three mem PTR parentheses zero. And these are some examples of doing that. So volatile gate array three star my first gate three I see is our structure pointer. And then down here we write my first gate three I see equals get gate three mem PTR zero. Then the pointer has its address and you can use structure dereference operator to get to elements of that um, card. So here we just have my first gate three IC, structure deep reference, and then you can get at the elements just like normal. So here's chan one dot ADC offset zero. So you have access to basically everything by using these pointers. This is the most efficient way of accessing uh, memory through C for your accessory cards. And uh, here, especially when you're accessing gate cards, it's important to be aware of the masking and shifting because they've stuffed relevant information in all kinds of random bits in these words. So you have to be aware of which bits are relevant. And um, Kurt has actually doing, done a really good job of telling you how to be aware of that in C. So when you look up a particular structure in the manual, It'll say, like, in C, you know, this is specifically bits, blah, 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 of the whole word element. And that way you can know how to mask and shift. It's pretty handy. 
Right, so I was just telling you this is the most efficient way of addressing elements of a card. But for certain products, you can't do that because they're really old and they haven't been mapped in PowerPMX memory. Specifically, accessory 11E, I think 53E, and a couple other old stuff. Um, you have to make direct I.O. pointers, which means instead of just indexing a whole structure that represents the card, you have to actually make pointers to each individual memory element, which is really annoying. And the way you do it is, is like this. I'm not going to talk about it, really. It's just here in case you're curious, because we already figured it out for all the cards that actually need that to be done, except, except for the 53E, but I don't think anybody buys that anymore. It's obsolete. Uh, it's been replaced by a newer product. But um, if you're curious, you can go through this. Basically, you use the PIOM, pointer to IO memory, and then you add the base address divided by 4, and then some offset to the register you're trying to get to. And that base address I just mentioned can be obtained from PSHIM points to offset gate and then the type of gate. So offset gate one, two, or three, and then you pass it the uh, index of the card, which is that zero for our gate three. And you also have offset card I.O. for the gate I.O. style cards. And then in the next couple slides, it just gives you tips for reading from and writing to registers. Um, just some formulas for masking and shifting business. So you can read through that on your own in case you're really curious. But we're just going to skip over that for now. Um, if you want to get to user buffer, you use the PUSHM pointer. So if you remember from Alex's presentation, we have a lot of different ways of accessing the memory in your user buffer. So D data will access the user buffer as double type, F data as float type, I data as int type, U data as unsigned int type, and C data as character. So to get at these different data types, you define a pointer in C of the same data type that you wanted to get at from the script environment. So if I wanted to go to a D, to D data element, I would use a double pointer. If I wanted to go to F data element, I use a float pointer. If I wanted to go to I data, I use an int pointer, and, and so on, so that you're using the same data type that you wanted to from script. And here's some examples of doing that. So if I want to get to sys.idata9, I make a int star pointer, so my usham int var. And then I assign the address as pushm, which is the pointer to user shared memory, cast it to type int. And we put int star to indicate that this is an address. When you're casting uh, the pushum, you need to make sure you have the star or it'll not work properly. And then you add the array element index that you want to get to. So add 9, and you get sys.idata9. And similarly, we do the same thing for a double pointer, star my usham d array. And this time, we're casting pushm to double star and adding 8192 so we can get to sys.ddata 8192. So this method will be required for logging captured positions through the capture compare interrupt because like I said this is the only way to transfer information between the capture compare interrupt and other parts of PMAC and you will use the IData style um, way of reading the user buffer. That's because in the capture compare interrupt you can only use integer math. Okay, if you want to get to a uh, M variable or a PTR variable through C, you can use get PTR var and then pass it the name of your variable, of your PTR variable. And you can also set the value with set PTR var, pass it the name and then the value you want to set to. And note that all the data types are double, but um, don't be worried. Once you use this function, PMAC will run it through the 
in variable function and format the data how it needs to be for that particular M variables definition. And then we have functions for arrays of pointers as well, which you can look at here. And here's just some examples of using those guys. Again, I'm kind of glossing over it because you can always go back and read uh, the syntax because you're probably not going to mem memorize it right now. It's pretty long. Um, something to note here, though, is it's generally not recommended to use these functions in deterministic programs. These are f slow because it will then basically pass your value through the M variable function, which formats the data and does masking and shifting and all this stuff. So it's easier to, instead of just using a PTR variable that's been defined in script, just make a new pointer in C doing the same thing that the, P, the script PTR variable did. So you just point your C pointer to the same memory location that the M variable was pointing, and then you can format the data on your own, and it'll be faster than uh, using those functions. And for that, you want to use the, uh, the steps that I described earlier in the direct IO access section of the class that we just went over and kind of glossed over because it's really complicated and confusing and most of you probably won't need it. But if you, if you do end up needing it, be sure to go back and take a look at that. Uh, so we have a bunch of nifty functions in C for doing motion or killing uh, motors and stuff. Here's just a few of them. You can find the rest of them in the IDE help. Just hit F1, and then you can type in uh, jog position, for example, and it'll explain the function to you. But you can do jogging, kill motors, you can abort motors, you can even send commands to the PMAC parser as though you're typing it in the terminal window using command and get response. That's pretty handy. Um, so these are very useful. And I'll just, if you want to make a C library, you can add the new C library project to the libraries folder, like I described before. And then you include the header file from your library using, excuse me, using this syntax in your C program. So it basically just backs up two folders and then goes into the libraries folder. And then you would put the name of your library and then the name of your header file here. That will change depending on how you've named it. Now I just want to describe some advanced uh, C features that we offer without going into too much detail unless you see one that you're interested in and then I can go into detail uh, because these are all, uh, not all of you will need these. So the C from script feature is a way that you can call a C function from a script program, which is cool and also necessary if you want to do kinematics in C. So basically you write all your kinematics out in C, in the user code.c file, and then inside your kinematic subroutine buffer, you do a C from script call and it will execute everything in C for you. So you can enable this um, with user algo.c func equals one. And Then you define the header like this. It's of type double, called C from script, receives seven double arguments, and then a local data star L data pointer. So it always needs to be defined like this, even if you don't use all seven arguments. They're customizable. They mean whatever you make them mean. And you might ask, oh, what if I need uh, you know, more arguments? You can just basically Use one of these arguments as a handler so that the C from script function knows the purpose that you're using the function for. So for example, like you can just define like, all right, if arg1 is one, then I'm using this for kinematics. If arg1 is two, then I'm using this for whatever else. And then inside here, you handle that and basically execute the necessary function from there. 
you only get one C from script function, but you can call other functions from that. So you can virtually have an unlimited number of purposes for C from script. And then you need to put the header or the, the, uh, the prototype in user code.h and then use export symbol on C from script. And there's just an <clears throat> example of calling it from a PLC. <coughs> Note that you have to actually store the result of the function, even if you don't use it. So you can just put it into a dummy P1000 if you want, or you can store the result uh, in a meaningful variable. And then you have to pass a value to every argument of the function, even if you don't use that particular argument. And if you want to get at uh, local data, you can make pointers, for example, double star R, L, C, and D, and then assign the addresses with get R, ver, PTR, and you pass in the L data that comes through the C from script. And you can use your R, L, C, and D pointers in array syntax, just like you would in the script environment. So R bracket zero represents R0 in script, L bracket 0 represents L0, and so forth. This is necessary if you want to do kinematics because the um, important variables involved in kinematics are C and D variables and L variables. R variables are used um, when you have subprogram calls and I think Alex probably explained that a very briefly one of these days. So. All right, so you can also make your own scheduled routines with the POSIX thread library, so which is handy if you, um, you want a program whose execution time is of a higher priority than phase or execution uh, period is higher than phase. It's also useful if you've somehow consumed all 32 background CPLCs. You can make your own background CPLCs using threading. Uh, there's a lot of different reasons why you might want to do it. And this is a stupid explanation of threading that I wrote a long time ago that I'm going to skip. And if you're interested in doing that, um, you can check out the application note on our forums. That's the link to the forum. And you can download my source code. Actually, one of our customers wrote most of it. He's a really smart guy. You'll see him on the forum as K-E-J-R. -E and uh, we've encapsulated the threading process into just a few functions. And you can read over the app note if you're interested in that. I'm going to skip over that for now. You can also write directly to USB and SD cards, USB dr drives and SD cards through C. Uh, this is nice if you want to do data logging for a large amount of information. You can just plug in a big old flash drive or even a um, hard drive through USB and then write to it. Anything that gets plugged into USB or SD card automatically mounts to the uh, media disk folder in Linux. I became a Texan temporarily for that sentence. And then you can create a file in the media disk folder and then just write to it using standard file IO functions that are available in C through the, I think the stdio.h header file. And this is an example of doing the data logging where basically we are just grabbing a bunch of P variables, opening a file with FOPEN, and then using sprintf to format it a certain way, and write to the file with F puts. That puts a string in the buffer, and then we use fclose to close the file, and that's about it. <coughs> 